Hey everybody, you're watching the Surf Star One Dad Breeding Hollywood at Imagination Home on a budget. In the pantheon of great original Cartoon Network series, no mention of it can be made without discussing Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends from the creator of the Powerpuff Girls, Craig McCracken. Eight-year-old Mac has outgrown his imaginary friend, Blue, a walking, talking security blanket. So he sends him to Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. A place where imaginary friends of all kind are put up for adoption. Mac then strikes to deal with Madam Foster, the titular proprietor, that as long as Mac comes to visit Blue every day, Blue will not be eligible for adoption. Thus, the two find the wackiest of adventures as crazy as the inhabitants of this facility. You see Wilt, Eduardo, Coco, oh, there's Wilt. And there's Mr. Hammond. And there's Coco, right there. There's also Goo, and Cheese, Jackie Combs, and Duchess. Her Royal Highness Duchess Diamond Persnickety, the first, last, and only. I fell hard for this show, as hard as Mac fell for Frankie and Frankie, my dear. Craig McCracken was really onto something here. He struck magic. Not in the same way he did with the Powerpuff Girls. Now believe me, that was good, but in my view, it doesn't hold a candle with Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. As soon as I saw it, I was definitely smitten, and I watched it all the time. In the pantheon of my personal favorite Cartoon Network series, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends is definitely number one in the top five. Number two would be Codename Kids Next Door. Number three is The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Four is Ed and Eddie. And five is Camp Laszlo. I also like my Jim Potter's a Monkey and Chowder. But Foster's definitely earns the gold medal here. I got its puzzle for 99 cents. It's a portrait of almost all of the characters in Foster's standing on the staircase in the Foster's foyer. It took four hours to complete and it cost me 99 cents. But it was four hours and 99 cents well spent. Plus, this is the first time we've ever done a puzzle on the thrift store run down. And this just might be my favorite puzzle, so I may not be searching for any more. But now I'm curious to find out if Cartoon Network has other puzzles I should be on the lookout for. That's the excitement of coming to the Zip Store. The unknown. As far as the series goes, I'm giving it... The full five claps. A hundred points. It is pure magic. Cartoon Network will never again be able to replicate its structured magic the way it did in the Tommy and Tara and Sea and City era of Cartoon Network. By the way, Tommy and Tara were the host of Cartoon Network Fridays, the live action one, not the Cartoon Cartoon Fridays one at all. That was pretty good too. Although I grew up with Cartoon Network during the Sea and the City era and Cartoon Network Fridays era. That's why Friday was my favorite night of the week. They took the Friday night death slot and emerged victorious. As far as the puzzle goes, it was fairly simple to put together. At least the characters were mostly simple. The background here was a little bit more difficult, but I survived. The box itself is a little bit worn, but none the worse for wear. So this puzzle is going to get the four or five claps. It's fun for kids, it's fun for everyone of all ages. The series itself, I mean, you can't get more perfect than Foster's. It is one of my all-time favorites. And bravo, Craig McCracken. So that's it. Thanks for watching. This is the Thrift Store Rundown, bringing Hollywood home on a budget. And where Emmy-winning ideas are never forgotten.